Hey guys, it's 5 a.m. in the morning, 5.25. I'm currently watching the um, Crazy Rich Asians movie. And when people watch the movie, they're like, oh yeah, it's Crazy Rich Asians, oh yeah, whatever, it's fine, ha 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 ha, right? Oh, about 5 a.m. And I'm fucking fuming. I'm genuinely fuming. Got my candle right here. It's really nice candles in a. I really like the cup that's in. Oh crap! The wax just spilled over. It. Yeah, at least it spilled inside the candle though. So go back to the candle and put that back in the spot. Fuck! I didn't mean to do that. I meant to like. See it's in this corner, in this little corner over there. I got this candle. I don't. I don't want to pick it up. Stupid dangerous the wax is gonna go everywhere. What the fuck? Why do I, why do I look so fat for a frame? <sighs> I'm so jealous, guys. I've messed up my sleep again recently, not intentionally, but I probably fix it again. It's not that deep. Like for me, I thought I have complete control over it. Before when I messed up my sleep, I felt like I have no control over it. But since I've already been through this rodeo, I've already had experience in messing up my sleep. I know I can just fix it again, and then everything will go back to normal, and life will ret return back to normal. Like I don't really care. <sighs> what was it again? I'm watching the Crazy Rich Asians movie. I'm probably gonna put my reaction as another video, like a few second reaction if it even YouTube even allows it. I don't think YouTube allows that shit. Just even me reacting to a clip, YouTube won't allow. But um, it's the part where Rachel Chu she gets to the mansion. The young fam, the grandma fam, grandma house, family mansion, and I just think to myself, "Holy fuck, bro!" Like I'm, like I always thought I was well off. I always thought my family was well off, but then I realized after a while, like my last, that they're like okay, at best upper middle class. There's always someone richer, and of course, shame on me, right? Like what Grant Cardone said before, shame on you trying to play the game or compare comparison. But I would like to have that because if you have that level of wealth and it's wealth, not riches, because riches, you could just have like riches, like McLaren, private jet, big house, big car, but you don't have family and friends around you, a community around you that you value. You know what I'm saying? A community of people that mean something to you, meaningful relationships, a meaningful, fulfilling life. That's wealth. All on top of that, also money. You know, it's, it's the holy trinity of wealth and my friend recently told me that I'm a slave to the idea of chasing and pursuing wealth. And, like, he says to me, very interesting, very interesting. I want to delve that into a, a, another video, actually. But I'm going to go back to this Crazy Rich Asians, but I'm just, I'm just so jealous, guys. I'm full of envy. I'm full of envy. I'm full of frustration. And frustration at myself, because, it, like, I know it's stupid to say, but if I started a business when I was five years old, like five years old, and then I became 17, that would be 12 years worth of entrepreneurship experience. I'll be making a lot of fucking money by now. And I'll be living a completely different life. If only, not necessarily within the education system, but if only someone, because I was reading books like, because I used to really love books, five, ten, no, I, I love books. I read a book a week. I read a book a week. And I, and I just kept spamming books. Literally after, like, it was I, every three days, I'd, sw I'd swim through a book. I'd be completely enveloped into it the entire day. Because I was in primary school. Nothing really fucking matters, right? You're in elementary or primary school. <sighs> nothing matters at that time. But I'd be completely enveloped and engrossed in these books. And had had only... If someone had given me like a financial self-help book. Like The Millionaire Fastlane by then. I think it was out in when I was like... Uh, when I was um, seven... Six, let's say five years old. That's around 12 years ago. 2023 minus... It's like, I'm about to be 18 in this year, so... I think it's 2022. 2022 minus 12. 210, 12, 2010. 2010. When is the millionaire fast the millionaire fast lane has changed my life and the trajectory of my life so far? When did the millionaire fast lane book come out? 2011. I wouldn't have been able to find it. 2011 though, that's crazy. And just a year after, I'm six years old, I'm still reading books. Books like crazy. I'm, I'm consuming books like crazy. If someone had just given me the, the Millionaire Fastlane when I was six years old, I would have realized so early then 
like the way the world is and the way the script is made and the fact that I will just forever remain broke and I will actually not be become rich and everything, everything. If I realize it that that sooner, because seven years old, I watched Kung Fu Panda. I think I watched 2012. I watched Kung Fu Panda, and Kung Fu Panda was the most how do I say this? The most prolific, impactful experience on me that I've ever like had in my entire life. I have never felt something so prolific and strong and powerful as much as Kung Fu Panda. Why? And that's funny to people, to people like, oh, it's Kung Fu Panda. The music. And like, oh, you, why are you feeling impacted by, impacted by Kung Fu Panda? It's a little kids movie, right? Da, 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 da. The the music was engrossing. The character development was amazing, and most importantly, the concept of death, the concept of failure, the concept of embarrassment. It was all present to me. Our Paul. In the first movie, he tried to look so... He tried his hardest. He tried his hardest to look at the Kung Fu Festival. I'm, I feel very passionate about this. It's 5, it's five fucking a.m. You can't think this shit. My entire family. I, I'm not going to find that picture. This is a while ago, okay, buddy? Okay, buddy. Okay, then, bro. Five, five. I th character development, the fact that Paul tried so goddamn hard to get into that Kung Fu Festival only to just... Firework in the air, become an, a, a piece of entertainment, slam down, be entertainment for everyone, and be absolute fucking failure. But then, by the chance, because of his hard work ethic, Ugo is like, <laughs> Dragon War is you. Dragon War is you. And then Ugo dies. He doesn't get to. He doesn't get to fight Tai Long. That's like an, an extra show, some shit for fan service. But at that time, Ugo fucking died. We don't, we don't get the spirit realm in like Kung Fu Panda 3. We don't know that shit. Uguay died. And I thought to myself, because I, I, I'm a kid right right? Because I think the, fi the fictional is also non-fictional. Because I read a lot of non-fiction. I also used to read a lot of, um, I used to read, read a lot of fiction. And non-fiction as well. I used to read a lot of English books and math books. I actually read the thesaurus a few times. <laughs> the dictionary. Because I was so bored. And I just loved reading. It's very weird. It's a... Is it weird? I think that's sick, to be honest. The reading is a powerful skill. Anyways, it was so important. Had someone just give me that book, because I, at, at that moment, if I had realized how mediocre my life was going to be, if I kept being in the direction, I would have changed. I would have, made, I would have took, took radical steps in order to, to change everything. I'm talking about radical. Radical fucking shit. I mean, like, had I had... Like, obviously, I, I beat myself off, uh, uh, up for this sometimes. Sometimes. I don't beat myself off this. I'm a 16-year-old kid, right? But there's that old 16-year-old kid who just gets a little bit of a business like, entrepreneurial experience. I remember that Yusuf uh, Abdeli. I don't know. I'm butchering his name. I apologize. All right? I mean, that's not to be offensive. He's a 16-year-old entrepreneur who's made over a million pounds. And, all the, uh, and obviously, he's probably an industry plant because... His father, his parents gave him like a 3D printer as a kid, and then he tried to sell it to his friends. That was valuable business experience. He's learning sales. It's valuable business experience. It doesn't matter how small it is, selling shit to his friends. And he's making money at a very young age in primary school. I think it was five, six, seven, sixteen, ten years on. He's a multimillionaire on a private jet. On the fuck making crypto shit. Making crypto coins. You know what I'm saying? People laughing at him. He doesn't give a fuck. He's making a bunch of money. That's that's that, that's probably what I could have been. That's a shadow. I, like, I could have been there. Or greater. Had I had just read the right book, done the right things, taken the right choices. And just, after that Kung Fu incident, I was in Vietnam. I was seven years old. And the movie came out. I watched it with my mom in the cinema. And I was just shook. It was a great movie. It was an amazing movie. But I was just shook. Because I knew at that point, everyone around me is going to die. I understood, at seven years old, the futility of life, all right? Everyone's going to fucking die one day, everyone's going to live forever, and we're all going to be sad. That's it, just sad. And everyone dies. And that, that, that life to me is just so, how do I say this, it's frustrating. It's so frustrating. I don't want to die mediocre. But then I fell into complacency. Oh yeah, then you got your uh, SAT SATs coming up. Do your exams. And someone just came along and told me, okay, you feel like this uh, this way. Mom, I, I told this to my mom and I was crying. 
I remember I used to sleep with my mom back then. It's not weird. I'm a kid, right? And I used to cry to her. I was hugging her. It's very, very cute. Very cute story. Awesome. I I cried. I didn't shit my pants or nothing. Chill out. I cried because I said to my mom, I don't I don't want you to die, mom. I was like, I don't want you to, I don't want you to die, mom. And I just watched a Kung Fu Panda movie. Oh, I don't want you to die. And she said something very fucking Asian and wise. Alright. I say Asian because it just sounds Asian, like out of a out of a Chinese story, alright? But <laughs> she said, Your journey is long and you experience many tolls in life. She says this in Vietnamese. I will not die anytime soon. Not within the next five, ten, fifteen years. So you just need to chill out and just focus on what you can do now. And they just those words sound good, right? Because if I if that was my son, which I'm gonna make my my son watch that movie by the way when he's fucking three, four, five years old, so he can understand the real shit. Kung Fu Panda is real shit, by the way. <laughs> Kung Fu Panda is real shit. That shit made me more a uh, uh, thing. Aware of my mortality. And of course, it wasn't like a morbid death. It was too, if it was too morbid, I probably would have been traumatized. But that trauma is, you know, like, that, I still got trauma from Kung Fu Panda. Because, like, I get, I see this mentor that I, I kind of, I, I, love, I love turtles, man. I fucking love turtles. Turtles and pandas. I used to have turtles and pandas plushies growing up because I love them so much. I used to, used to be, I used to be on that shit, man. Turtles, I was a turtles and panda kid. All right. Because of Kung Fu Panda, alright? And a bit before that, because I watched like a documentary before, Na- National Geographic. That shit was fire. But then I, I just see, like, this wise turtle who, who's, uh, just, he just die. He doesn't get to be Talon, he doesn't get to go to the end, he just passes on the torch. He's so old. That's gonna be you one day. That's gonna be your parents one day. That's probably your grandparents now. Some of my grandparents, yeah. That just frustrates me, man. It just frustrates me. Can't find the real shit. Anyways, those words that my mom said to me, they're good words. I'm a child. Right. But... If I have a son and he tells me that I'm shit, I'm gonna be like, then what can you do now? I will tell the same exact thing, but what you can do now? I'll put the pressure on him. I'll put, I'll see how he can do a thing. Focus on the pressure. Because that's what, that's what kids are like, right? I remember Patrick Beck David kids, uh, Patrick Beck David, his kids were like, how do I say this? They said to him a while back, oh, um, oh, dad, or they said daddy. That's just like weird. For me to say, well, what world we live in? I can't even say daddy without making it weird. Anyways, I would say dad. Um, dad, I'm gonna be a world champion, um, MMA a fighter. And his and his dad was like, this motherfucker might be onto something. A day later, no, a few hours later, because someone uh, thing pressures him. You gonna be a world champion? How are you gonna be a world champion? Someone tells him. Someone tells him that, like a full grown adult motherfucker man. But it's good. I think. Because those kids are the the, few, the next generation, so it's good that they get pressure, in my opinion. And then, and he was like, mm, Dad, I want to be a world champion MMA fighter. And his dad looked at him like this. Motherfucker, why are you backtracking? Why are you backtracking? Because if he says he wants to, instead of he's going to, he doesn't have to do it. If he says he, want to, he wants to commit, he won't have to do it. You know? Oh my god, it's almost 15 minutes. Damn it! I'm, I'm, I want to talk more, man. Back to Kung Fu Panda. That shit, that shit was real shit. Right? What's, what's the message of this video? Be aware of death. Be jealous. Keep those negative emotions inside of you. 48 Law of Power says, No matter how much we try to change the society, the same negative, ugly emotions still reside within us. Keep them inside of you and use them as infinite motivation and discipline to become better. I'll catch you in the next video. Sayonara.